Okay. The ecosystem approach to fisheries management. All right, we've looked at uh, lots of different uh, fisheries management approaches, uh, mostly centered on single species. And today we're going to uh, look at something that is um, a more modern development, a more recent development in fisheries management thought. Okay, how do we con currently control and protect fishing stocks? All right, see, this is a good place to stop the video. See what you've learned over the uh, over the term, and um, if we had this as an exam question, you could uh, you might expect to see something like this as an exam question. You might want to be able to jot down a few ways that we can currently control and protect fishing stocks. So um, stop the vid now and go ahead and jot those down, and then we'll we'll come back and you can test yourself. Okay, you're back. Okay, closure of areas, limit of areas, quotas, catch limits, policies, reducing fleet, incentives not to fish, gear restrictions, and um, what else that may what else might you have listed? All these things are things that we've talked about around um, uh, fishing management for, over the term. And now um, we, but those are the traditional methods that have been used to try to uh, stop uh, overfishing. And mostly, these are focused on single species. So we look at the stock of snapper, or we look at the stock of ling, or we look at the stock of, ho stock of hokey, or we look at the stock of pawa or, or crayfish. And um, let's say if we, if we say gurnard, uh, snapper, kingfish, crayfish, um, terakihi, kawai, these all inhabit the same habitat, slight variations, but can you catch only one of these species if you go out and commercially fish? Well, you, if, a tra if you're trawling for a snapper, you could probably avoid catching, um, uh, you're probably not going to catch a lot of kingfish, and you're probably not going to catch a lot of um, crayfish, but you are going to catch uh, John, you're going to catch John Dory, and you're going to catch um, Gurnard, and you're going to catch kawa, and you're going to catch squid, and you're going to catch puffer fish, and lots of other things. So there is a bycatch uh, factor. So single species management automatically has a flaw if you are managing one stock, but you catch m multiple stocks with one method. So single fish populations are usually viewed in isolation. For example, the snapper stock stocks are assessed and quota allocated separately from Terraki or Gurnard, even though they're both caught in the same places by the same techniques. So the obvious problem can, this can cause, and um, have a moment to think about that. You can stop this video before you go to the next slide. Okay, the obvious problems are, of course, that um, you could overfish one species by targeting another. Okay, so they might not be sufficient. All right. And Obviously, if we look at the way the world is going in terms of fisheries, then we can see that there are going to be some areas or that uh, where single species uh, management has just not worked. Um, if you look at the uh, overall statistics for global fisheries, 10% depleted, 21% overexploited, uh, 47 full to heavily exploited. So you've got... 60, 78 percent fully or over exploited. Okay, moderately exploited 15 percent, and there's probably even some contention about whether moderately exploited is fully exploited. Under exploited 3 percent, recovering 4 percent, so even 4 percent. So 78 uh, percent, where we talked about 78 percent being fully to over exploited, that still doesn't paint the whole picture because. 4% are actually so depleted that they are in a recovering position. Okay, so we're in pretty bad shape overall. There's not a lot of room for expansion and probably uh, a lot of room where we, or a lot of area where we actually need to under uh, stop or stop producing as, as much as we are. Um, looking at a case history in the Mediterranean, uh, the bluefin tuna are considered nearly commercially extinct. Okay, they're only about 
0.5% of the virgin biomass of large sharks in the Mediterranean. So that means for, for every 200 large sharks there were in 1950, and this is a... a statistic from a few years ago from 2008 this so which means that it's probably worse but for every 200 sharks that were in the Mediterranean in uh, 1950 we have one now large shark okay so this has obviously has uh, a lot of ecological flow down effects okay coral reefs 70 percent of coral reefs are threatened 51 percent are at risk Southeast Asia rises to 81%. And a lot of that has to do with over, it's overfishing um, in ways that actually destroy the, um, the corals themselves. So they destroy habitats. Uh, things like cyanide fishing for uh, live fish or um, fishing with uh, explosives. So this causes, obviously, um, when you're talking about uh, destruction of habitat, then you're talking about imbalances in the food, in the, uh, food web, especially if you're doing something like removing uh, a lot of the foraging, uh, the forage species or the top predators, uh, leading, obviously, to things like, well, if you see here, this crown of thorn starfish versus a, uh, a, um, a healthier-looking reef. Okay, so what happens is these crown of thorn starfish, they actually feed on corals, but because uh, in a lot of areas the conchs and, um, and the other organisms that mostly large conchs that feed on these crown of thorn starfish have been removed by fishing, that's allowed these crown of thorn starfish to proliferate and uh, actually wipe out areas of coral. Here we go, this is a uh, uh, scene of... Um, shrimp trawling and you can see here what's come out of the uh, this is the this is the area that where they've dumped everything from the cod end and here's the area that is being where here's uh, the, the catch is being scooped up on a table for sorting here's a shrimp right here most of the other stuff that you see starfish uh, small fish some of these will be uh, juvenile commercially important species that will be thrown back dead, killed really for no use. Uh, here we see um, the same thing. You can see the shrimp, these um, uh, sort of tannish colored things here in there. That's actually not a bad um, catch. That's probably only about 200% throwback and possibly, and so a big fish like this can be, can also be used, utilized as part of the catch. But most of that stuff just gets thrown overboard. All right, and fishing, here we go. Okay, sea floor before bottom trawling, sea floor after bottom trawling. Does this impact any niches? Uh, definitely. Okay. We turned um, all of these little habitats, these little um, three-dimensional habitats into a sort of rubbly flat. Here's a picture of the um, mud plume from a shrimp trawler taken from a satellite, and you can see all the, how the the sediment has been stirred up by um, by the trawler going past and the, the tickler shape dragging on the bottom. And so, if you get too much sediment, then you get light limitation, uh, and some of these areas that um, that wind up with a lot of sediment in the in the water, light limitation. Lots of dead stuff on the bottom and um, anox conditions, and you get actually dead zones where um, there's been too much uh, input of sediment. So here's another here's a nice uh, satellite view of trawl paths uh, from Australia. Okay, these are shrimp trawlers, and you can see where the mud has remained suspended from all of these trawlers uh, moving through the water. And is this is this going to get any better? Okay, so here's our population curve that we saw at the, one of the first classes. All right, we saw this, and here's what our population's been doing over the last years. There's incredible exponential growth of human beings over the last um, last couple of centuries, and so 
can we expect that there's going to be any less demand and less fishing pressure on the on the uh, wild caught population of, of fish around the world? Obviously not. Okay, and we've got the quota management system here in New Zealand, but what are the rules for fishing outside the rules? Our AE's exclusive economic zone. So the rules are there are no rules. So if you're going to fish, you're going to have environmental effects. That is the there's that is the truth. There's no way to avoid it. And so we have to be smart about it. Let's have a look at some of the uh, li let's have a list of uh, a look at the list of some of the effects that you might expect from fishing in marine environment. But we have got to manage um, the effects of of fishing because you cannot fish without affecting the environment. So you're gonna no matter what you do, unless you're taking um, very 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 little. Uh, a negligible amount from a stock, you are going to reduce the biomass of from um, from the carrying capacity from the virgin biomass. You're going to have physical impacts with any type of um, any type of fishing. If it's cray potting and they do get lost, they damage things when they when they fall on them. They uh, get lost and they can ghost fish. Obviously, trawling has uh, uh, creates a physical impact. Long lining creates a physical impact when things get caught on rocks and then you have the rubbish with, long, with lost long lines and the like. Um, so there is a physical impact from pretty much every fishery. Uh, mortality of bycatch and non-target species. Okay, bycatch, we've talked about it quite a bit. Changes in age and, age and size composition. Now this is important. Okay, we know a little bit about um, about genetics, we know a little bit about. Um, uh, well, you don't really need to know about genetics, but we do know a little bit about inheritance and um, evolution. And so, if you have a, a population of large fish, and you target, or you have a, par a population of, of uh, let's say, a virgin population, so you've got some large fish and some small fish. You've got the whole uh, range of ages and size in that population. Let's say that there's a market for big ones or people uh, recreationally are targeting targeting big ones. You will, or you've put in a size limit and you can keep everything of, above a certain size. Well, if you take all of those larger fish and the fish that are, that grow slower because of a genetic difference, and perhaps breed maybe twice before they're um, before they're of catchable size rather than once. Those ones will produce more offspring, leading to a slower growing population, which in fact lowers your production rate of uh, of of that fish. And in certain uh, species, in the snapper grouper complex, that change in age and size composition and growth rates has been measured. So we do have effects in um, uh, in terms of the characteristics of, of individuals within a population by fishing. We've been introduced to selective pressure, essentially. Changes to marine food webs, predator-prey species. Well, we've talked about that a little bit. Um, and the introduction of fishing-related debris, ghost fishing. So these are all some of the effects that you're going to have in marine environments from fishing. So here's something that you can do. Again, you can stop the video, and we'll go on to this um, to the answer to this in the next video. But have a look at this problem. Let me try to explain this well, so that you know exactly what you're what you're up against. How would you solve the problems of bycatch and habitat destruction and integrate the protection of all species while still allowing for fishing to continue? Okay, so fishing obviously is an important part of our our economy, and it produces a lot of food. And we don't necessarily want to um, just stop producing um, that food, and because a, a lot of people count on it. There's an interesting uh, report out by Hillborn and Worm um, that I think was 2010 or 11 that said that um, in fact it's um, 
if you look at the amount of um, ecological destruction that happens or the energy that's put into producing uh, protein on land, like from, from cows or sheep or pigs or even free-range stuff, it's still less than what is... Um, it's still less of a an impact on the world than fishing. So fishing is actually a low impact, um, just in terms ecologically speaking, can be a low impact um, food production. So we want to keep allowing for fishing to happen, but we also want to allow for habitat destruction to be um, stopped Okay, and we want to solve the problem of bycatch, so we want to be able to protect species or populations that are caught as bycatch, and um, we want to um, be, able, be able to integrate all three of these. And so how would you, as a fisheries manager, now that you've gone through most of this course, solve this problem? Okay, think about it, and we'll talk about this in the next video.